ice, feared and dreaded by pilots across the country. At this winter airport, an endless battle. The ammunition, a glycol-based chemical, is sprayed onto the wings. It's a cold fact that without de-icing, the plane can stall in takeoff and crash. Many blame ice for the crash that killed 28 people at Stapleton last November. But de-icing is still an inexact science. FAA rules make it illegal for a pilot to take off with ice or frost on the wings. But when to de-ice and which chemicals are best are still questions without answers. A runway emergency. A Continental 737 returns to the airport after an engine fails in flight. Well, they had a they have an engine problem, I think, of some sort. But that's enough for me. I want I want another airline out of here. I'm not taking this one. We uh, left from uh, Sacramento last Sunday in the snowstorm. And we've been on five Continental planes. Three of them have had mechanical problems. I'm going United. I'm not flying Continental. Continental loses a round in its bitter struggle with United Airlines for dominance in Denver. This passenger joined us from Continental Airlines. Going to Omaha today. We can check the... It's a rivalry pitting the darling of deregulation against one of the nation's oldest airlines. Uh, we don't have any personal animosity against each other, but... Uh, but you we, just don't like each other. Uh, we just don't like each other too well. <laughs> Jack Eakey kind of is like United's the, uh, top man in Denver. We like to keep our eyes on our competition and have a feel for what kind of uh, situation their passengers are facing. And like what, for instance? Well, if they're having delays or they're having airplane problems or they're having line weight problems, such as uh, the long lines you see here now, Sometimes we're able to make some adjustments in our own operation to take advantage of that. Why don't we go over and check the uh, monitor over here? Well, I can see they're having some trouble, Peter. Yeah, as you can see, there are a number of delayed flights up there. That particular screen would tell me that they're probably having a bit of a tough time right now. We're a very large group from Miami that uh, became 80-some people here, and we all stuck. And the pilot of the airplane got off the plane and he said he would, not, he would not get on that plane and fly it. It seems to be the policy of the airline just to, uh, you know, treat the people like cattle and whatever happens fine with them. We doubled in size overnight. Continental's Ned Walker. We did have some problems primarily back early in 1987. Those problems have, for the most part, been overcome. 31 G and H are together, 32 B is an unsmoking aisle. Our loads have never been better in the city of Denver. Our passengers, you know, continue to flock to us. And I think you've seen by being here on the busiest weekend of the year, the passengers are, are pleased with what we're doing here. I had a reservation with Continental Airlines from Seattle to Philadelphia via Denver, okay? Uh, when I got here, they told me that my flight out of Denver to Philadelphia had been canceled, that I would go to service counter 18. So I walk a quarter of a mile down there. I get down there, and at that point in time, they haven't even made arrangements to get me on anything. Now I'm going to go back over, and they're going to make, I'm going to make them put me up in a hotel until I get a flight out of here tomorrow. And then after that, I'll see if I can sue their hiney. That line's way back to there. <laughs> Could you tell me how I could get a hold of the uh, manager, service center manager, please? Sir? Hello, I'm Waylon Keck, and I had a scheduled flight in here this morning, which got canceled leaving here to Philadelphia. I want to know at what time that you knew that airplane got canceled. That's what I would like to know. OK, can I ask why? Absolutely, if you knew that it was canceled before I left Philadelphia, uh, before I left Seattle. You should have called me and told me. And the problem was that the crew is here in Denver. The aircraft is broken. Never got in last night. Well, what do you think of that? I think it stinks. We had a lot of anger in, in your concourse. What about that? Is, has this been a tough couple of days because of the heavy loads? Well, I think the past two days have certainly been the busiest days of this year. 
this is not a typical operation with uh, these types of numbers. We're real pleased to handle these passengers. I think you'll see that the vast majority of these passengers are very pleased. We've offered them a quality product at a fair price, and I think you can see the concourses are full because the passengers want to be here. Typical Continental. It's either late, delayed, canceled. Get this, no pilot. Got a plane, plane's great. No pilot out of Denver. Uh, the baggage truck ran into the airplane and they canceled the flight. It took us 24 hours from the time we left home. It's unbelievable. <laughs> My story, I just walked up here to hear them announce they don't have a plane for this flight. They canceled two flights and nobody would tell us how many seats were even on an airplane so that we could run and try to find another flight. So it's been a zoo, you know. Yeah, at least you don't have a long line to wait in. Do you hope to get out of here tonight? I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. It might be tonight before I get to the head of the line. <laughs> United Airlines benefits from all this frustration, picking up stranded passengers. What flight got canceled on Continental, so we have to go standby? United also tries to lure ticketed passengers away from Continental using a computerized system called Tor. I am searching for the customers that are returning on another carrier. I have one, uh, Danny Bauer, uh, at present has a return reservation on Continental on the 6th. Danny Bauer, please. May we see at the podium at B20? Danny Bauer, please. Hey, Mr. Bauer? Yeah. Hi. I'm Don with yes. United. Uh -huh. Man, you're traveling on our competitor from Detroit back to Grand Junction. Yes. And uh, your flight leaves at 1020 on the 6th, gets in at 120. United has a comparable flight. Leaves at 10.20, gets in at 1.10, about 10 minutes earlier. We'd love to have your business. Can I have it? Yeah. Okay. Torque stands for Try Our Real Quality United Experience. A nice little slogan, but the back of the button, which features a Continental jet, reveals what the Torque program is really all about. Continental suffered through a rough two days. Thank you very much. But if you really look at the facts out there today, you'll see that our operation was affected by a snowstorm out in Newark. We have a very large hub operation out in Newark. And when you have a snowstorm hit a city like Newark, which is very important for us, it does create a ripple effect. I just, I missed my flight. It's no bad just had a bad day. But Continental struck back at United during our 48 hours by doing what it does best, announcing a new round of fare cuts. Gone 414. Yeah, Which yours has gone. gone. Still here though. 86 is gone. They've got you on 80. That's, that's going to be gone. It's already after four. The next one they've got you on is at 530. There's hubbub at the hub. It's hard to find a non-stop anymore. Hi, I'm in Denver. These days, the airlines send you to their hub airports and then on to your final destination. It keeps the planes full. So it's swing your schedule round and round and hope your flight's still on the ground when you arrive late at the hub. My flight from LA was late, so I missed this flight. The airlines call it hub and spoke, but frustrated flyers call it hub and choke. Nine hours now since Betty Campbell left home on her way to her mother's bedside. All she and her granddaughter can do is hope they make the standby flight. But flight 485 is full and leaves. Now there is only one more flight to Burbank tonight. And I leave Denver at 504. I hope. I better be on this plane or I'm going to start walking. I tell you, I've had it. Huh? Honey, if I don't get on this plane, you ain't heard no bitching yet. No, they were here. Huh? Yeah, well, uh, hopefully, good Lord's willing, I'll be there at 641, and there haven't been no change in her condition.
switch to departure 124.3 and uh, after takeoff to heading at 220, clear for takeoff, United 270 heavy. Far from the romance of the World War Ace flying by the seat of his pants, the 767 pilot is flying by onboard computer. Winds west 5244, squawk 4510, pressure 4510. Center autopilot command, and we're going to be now. Automation is, has come along, as you can see in this airplane. It's the, one of the most, it is the most modern airplane flying in the United States today. Uh, I think this airplane, how many microprocessors does this thing have in it? Paul, about 150? It has over 150 uh, microprocessors. Which makes it possible for the two of us to operate it as, uh, as efficiently as the uh, older airplanes with three. It gives us the opportunity to look outside the airplane a lot more, uh, which is critical in the areas where there's so much so much traffic as there is in the Los Angeles, Long Beach, Ontario region. Some new jets are equipped with electronic eyes and ears, prepared to warn the pilot of a plane too close. If he comes within a, the parameters of the equipment, and we're on a collision course, and at the same altitude, it'll, it'll tell the instruments, it'll give us an oral warning, and it'll give us an instrument command to, to fly away from one another, if you will. 42 out of 36 for 24, and uh, we've got the pedal to the metal. Even though these aircraft seem to be able to fly themselves, they can't. In fact, as a result of the November crash at Stapleton, the FAA just warned airlines not to pair two inexperienced pilots together. One now must be a veteran on that particular plane. Okay, there's a thousand feet, and the runway's inside. Very well, sir. Flaps. Uh, Denver Tower United, uh, 503 is Gandy for 3-5 right. A 737 jetliner is on final approach to Denver Stapleton Airport. Uh, 504, you're clear to land roughly 3-5 uh, right. And we have a wind shear in progress. I think you got level 2 thunderstorm off the end of runway uh, 17. Uh, United uh, 504, Roger. I uh, understand we're clear to land, runway 35 right, and uh, we have the wind shear warning. Okay, we're going above the glide path. Airspeed bleeding off. We've got a wind shear situation. Max power. Nose 15 degrees. Airspeed's 120 and decaying. Looks and sounds pretty real, doesn't it? Which is precisely the point. But we're in a flight simulator, a very sophisticated $15 million kind of video game. The simulator puts airline pilots through all kinds of dangerous but make-believe situations, which, if they happened in real life, could end in a crash and a lot of dead passengers. Once a year, by law, airline pilots must be recertified as competent. That's what they're doing here inside the simulator. Take off thrust. Yeah, OK, you got the power. All right. The rain, the lightning, the runways are all computer generated. Those unfriendly skies are right there inside that box. Posi rate, gear up. Gear up. Jesus. All right. Thrust. Firewall thrust. OK. Flight path. Airspeed's decreasing. You're still climbing. 1,500 up, 1,500 up. Airspeed's decreasing. 1,000 down, 1,000 down. Airspeed decreasing. 2,000 down. Airspeed's increasing. Airspeed's increasing. Airspeed's Air increasing. Airspeed's increasing. Positive rate of climb. 500 up. 1,000 up. Airspeed's increasing. Airspeed is increasing. Positive rate of climb. OK, we're out of that. Hey, very nice. Uh, the situation is this. We're on a 67. Uh, we're in the process of taxiing towards the active runway, and we're going to be taking off here momentarily. So if Flight like attendants have to go through training once a year, too. This is a mock-up of a 767 jetliner, which is about to crash. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your first officer. We are approaching the runway, and we'll start takeoff momentarily. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Keep your head down. Get out! 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 Get out!
If there is a crash, and there are survivors, is one of the problems you have panic, everybody's running around the plane not knowing where to go, what to do? Not really. And that's a misconception that people have. Uh, the real problem is exactly the opposite, negative panic or behavioral inaction. Uh, we wish there was more panic, but there's a, a real reluctance on the part of people to move unless they get positive instruction from crew to get them up and moving. What do you mean, they're just sitting there on the plane? They just sit there. Can I try to open, sure. open this door? Now, let's say we're in an emergency, okay. all right? Cabin is filled with smoke, it's dark, and I reach for the... Uh-oh, wrong handle. When you pull the handle, you disengage that slide bar, you disengage the power assist, and now we, we have now lost that door for all uh, pra practical purposes. The plane is on fire, the smoke here, and because I pull this lever, which is right at the bottom of the arrow, which says open up here. That's true. You're telling me we can't get out now? That's true. Unless someone rearms the door. Yeah, but it's, it's going to take a, a trained crew member to probably do that. But even a trained crew member in the dark with smoke around might very well go for the... I mean, I may have just doomed 100 people to their death because I pull this handle. That's possible. Of course, that's why we have flight attendants sitting adjacent to that seat. Has it ever happened where a flight attendant pulled the wrong handle? Uh, it has. How could that happen? It's part of the design of this particular airplane. And again, it's, it's not unique to, to the 767. Uh, most large jumbo airplanes have an arm disarm system. The handle I pulled by mistake is supposed to open the emergency slide outside the door. The escape door handle, which must be pulled first, is the red one just inches below. And we're out. Critics charge that since deregulation, some airlines have been sloppy about maintenance. The FAA last year fined all airlines a total of $12 million for maintenance and safety violations. That's the most ever. And just two weeks ago, the FAA ordered a tightening of maintenance rules. Uh, mobile One, maintenance control. Hey, I've got uh, 767 out on Bravo 14. Uh, they've got a damage to a nose count. I need you out there with a camera. I'm not sure who did it yet. During our 48 hours in Denver, an extra headache the already overworked maintenance staff didn't need. A food service truck hit the engine of Flight 116. To give you an idea of why these modern jets need so much attention, take the 747. There are literally millions of parts, four and a half million removable parts in this plane. It was evening before Flight 116 was patched up and ready to fly. Only the start of a long and bitter cold night for those on the maintenance staff. All right. Okay. Uh, manpower tonight on the non-routine crew. Wayne Miller will have Mike Gatos, Glenn Beckley, George Losey, and Nita Weber. Workload's kind of heavy tonight. Uh, Wayne, you'll have 56, 57 coming to the West Bay, and we're going to have to jack that aircraft to do the uh, main landing gear side strut. Uh, and it's cold out there tonight. Keep your ears covered and watch that frostbite. And uh, be careful out there. I don't come from a long line of mechanics or anything in my family, so I, uh, I kind of stumbled into the job. Anita Weber is one of 60 mechanics working the graveyard shift at United's maintenance hangar. Why would you want to work a graveyard shift? You got the airplanes all night. You can learn a whole lot more when you got all night to work on a day shift. You're you're parking them and pushing them and doing what you can in the 40 minutes or an hour that they're on the ground. The job tonight is a new one. Testing the landing gear of a 727 for cracks in the metal using ultrasound. 
This is non-routine. This yeah. is not something we do every night, but now the A, A checks and the B checks and the K checks, they call routine maintenance. You have to know a lot of things about a lot of airplanes. That's why they have maintenance manuals. There's six airplanes that we get consistently here in Denver. It'd be foolish to try and commit six airplane systems to memory. But this is not like working on a car where you can pretty much walk away at 4 o'clock and go have a beer. And if they break, you can't pull over to the side of the road either. <laughs> It's the middle of the night now, and all night, every night. United repairs an average of 17 of its jets in Denver. With schedules to keep routes to fly come morning, there's a lot of pressure here. Part of the job. Uh, it's, uh, nobody's breathing down your neck, but they want you to do it in the safest, fastest fashion. I mean, they have an airline to run. Good Coming down. 3.30 a.m. They found no metal fatigue, no cracks in the landing gear. I love it. It's the best job I ever had. It's fun. What do you think food is to the guy who's who's sitting in the plane? I think the meal is something our passenger looks forward to. If we can liven up the flight with their food, then uh, it's, we're doing a good job. This is our sandwich production area. Uh, right here, we'll be making s 68 today, which is a code for a uh, coach sandwich. We'll make approximately 5,000 of these sandwiches today. After a while, you. Uh, you start to see sandwiches in your sleep, I guess. <laughs> you know? How much of your food that is served on an airplane has been frozen at some um, point along the way? Yeah, a lot of coach meals, which, which includes breakfast meals, breakfast omelets. Are these omelets any good? They're great. Are you sure you have <laughs> You're not just saying that? No, no. These are alpine omelets. They're perfect. Do you hear stories from people who fly about how bad airline food is? Yes. Yeah, I do. But this isn't a restaurant. I mean, uh, we feed 25,000 people a day. That's a lot of people. Someone might say, come on, it's just airline food. What are you taking it so seriously for? Uh, it is. It is serious. This is, uh, this is our livelihood. Uh, if we can't give the uh, passenger a quality product, a quality food product, then we might, might as well not be in business. Would you go to a restaurant that served airline food? Uh, <laughs> now you got it. <laughs>